Welcome everybody here today, and we'll start by standing and saying the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So this is the Curry County 4-H and Extension Service District Budget Committee meeting. And what we're going to do, maybe I should introduce everybody. Already. We've got Louise Kallstrom, County Accountant, Tom Huxley, Commissioner, myself, Sue Gold, Commissioner, Port Boyce, Commissioner, John Huddle, our County Council, Brenda Scarbird, our Administrative Assistant, and we've got Lynn Boniface and Frank Burris. Frank Burris and Wiley Thompson. So I assume that we, uh, Frank, are you? Well, you need to elect, okay. elect, yep, elect so a chair. First of all, you need, we need to elect a chair. Before we do that, oh. um, as business with just OSU Extension, not the Budget Committee, um, we've got a new intergovernmental agreement put together. You should have copies of this. Oh, I'm sorry. This is a Budget Committee Okay. do that later then okay thank you yeah you can you could give a we're learning with you you could give a report to the budget committee <laughs> of this agreement but you can't take any action on the agreement okay there's no need to give a report okay. on it and thank we'll, you. we'll deal with it later all right. another action um, so the first order of business is to elect a budget officer for the district budget committee. Uh, historically, I've served in that capacity, uh, and I'd uh, entertain a motion to to uh, ha have a person be the budget officer for that budget committee. I move that Frank Burris be the be budget officer for the, this hearing. For uh, chair, budget chair. Yeah. I'll second the motion. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Okay. So um, the first order of business is to re-up um, Peggy Gergen as a budget committee member. Uh, her term actually expired um, in 2017, which we just discovered. Um, so we're um, upping her term to a three-year term uh, ending in 2021. So um, I've got a... Um, uh, um, what you call this uh, an order uh, to uh, to up um, Peggy Gergen as a member of the bu budget committee for the Curry County 4-H and Extension Service District. Um, Aren't the budget committee members usually elected by the board and not by the budget committee itself? So not the way we've done it in the past, but that, that may have changed. It, the 4-H the extension, Nick, is someone not mic'd? Yeah. Oh, I'm not. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Way to go, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Let, let me take a look, but usually the 4-H the extension budget committee, and the budget committee is created by statute. There's <coughs> usually a statute that says the budget committee will be these people and these people. Um, so the There's three uh, board members and three appointed. Right, but let me let me take a look and just see if there's anything different we need to be doing. Sorry about this. Okay, well we can table this if you want and go on with the budget stuff and then talk about it. Um, at the end, if we need to, well, let's just or address let's just, it at a different time. Let's just take a look. Um, we're, what it gets to is, for starting, and if I'm not mistaken, Frank, we actually already. So, oh, if I you. if I could just kind of go backwards a little bit, and I know we're struggling here somewhat, but if I'm not mistaken, wasn't there an action presented by the 4-H district to appoint a budget officer? and it was left in blank and so our board of commissioners sent it back and said whose name do we put in here and we put in your name and then our board already appointed did that do you, does the board recall an action i know there was one recently yes. a meeting go ahead yes. your name yeah okay that was done a few months ago 
So our board Reporting of commissioners. Yep, our board of commissioners um, who oversees the 4-H district, which is why we're here, um, did, did that and appointed you uh, as that. So that was done. And then I'm assuming that the budget committee members for the 4-H district were already have already been appointed and are just a, it's just a standing budget committee. Well, I, the, the budget committee meets and the officers are elected. So if, if you, what you did, what the board did a couple of months ago was renew a appointment of a budget committee member. And was that correct? No, they appointed, the, the, they appointed the, the budget officer to present, to, to develop and present the 4-H budget. Oh, so the budget officer. I, right, and okay. that's what Frank is. Okay, so I, okay. But you didn't appoint a budget committee member at that time. No, they've, they've already, they already have a standing budget committee. We okay, have a question. So a budget officer doesn't, is it usually an annual thing? Budget committee members are like three years or? But can I yeah. comment yeah. that just really quick? Um, and going through everything with our you want to come uh, up budget committee. Yeah, you need to be on the microphone on the and you need to, are the, did those get turned on with the, I think they are. <coughs> <coughs> yeah. Our uh, budget committee members were all in play as, but as I was going through the last orders, uh, the last time that Peggy's appointment came through, instead of a three-year term, for some reason it was done at a two-year term, which I believe maybe was our prior budget officer was trying to um, stagger the appointments so we wouldn't be all, all out of uh, budget committee members at once. So when I was going back through all of the our history stuff just to make sure we were all in line, Peggy's term actually ended last year, June 30th, um, as far as the last order that we had. So I drew up another order. She um, okayed another application and, and agreed to serve on our committee for another now three years instead okay. of the two that he had had before. So, and so in the past, we, when we've had um, these re-ups of a budget committee member, we have brought him to this meeting. So, so the, um, the local budget law says a budget um, committee members which are these six people um, approve a, a, a budget and approve a property tax rate. So they don't have any authority to appoint members. That's the board itself, and that would have to go to a board meeting. I think, so how many committee, because it, it, the like the budget committee members, and this is sort of a question for county council, the budget committee members for the county, it's specific per statute that the, there's rotating and there's three and they do every three years and they alternate. So you're three on year number one, you're, you're three, you start on year number two, you're three, you start on year number three. Um, so there's always one that's changing each year, but that appointment is by the, the governing body or the yeah. board. And I would think that that's the same here, where the appointment, because you reference an order, it's not a resolution, it's, it's an order. Um, and that you don't have that a copy of anything here, do you on that? Because that would show who, usually on an order, it shows who signed it, who approved it. Yeah, it's not. Okay, see this, this, it needs to be signed. this is by the governing body or by the, by the board, I'll give Correct. it back to you. So it's not this committee then cannot appoint a committee member, even though we're the board, but we're a committee member for this meeting. And I, if I, if I could, are we, for, for, for the members of the district, um, are the appointment that expired, were you, were you talking about your district board members or your Committee members. Your, your, your committee, committee members. Budget, committee, committee members. Budget, budget, committee. Committee. committee members. Yes. But you shouldn't have more than an equal number of our governing body. The, is, is we what don't. Our, we have don't. three um, three budget Thank committee you. members. So, Frank, you are not a budget committee member. You are just the... He's that's the budget correct. officer. Okay. Yes. So... That's correct. All right. So the numbers add up. Okay. And... Uh -huh. But we cannot 
this morning point a budget committee member? I think what would happen is we'd have to recess. The Board of Commissioners would have to call an emergency meeting to appoint a budget committee member, or we proceed with a quorum uh, of five for the time being, three Board of Commissioner members and two. That would be okay with the with the committee or with, with that's fine with me. That's fine and then with we me. set up a and regular meeting, meeting at the yeah. next public meeting, then we would could appoint a committee member and get everything back in sync. Yeah, that's fine with me. So I think we, what what we're proposing to do is to refresh or fill or complete the, help the term out of the expired term. That probably should have been done before now. Um, Agreed. And, and, and so, yeah, and yeah, so that was that was an oversight. Um, on our part, and it's and the thing about it is, it's okay because you have a amongst right amongst we have five out of six who are don't need any additional appointing to to conduct right. business. So Correct. we have a quorum. Okay. It's just a uh, you know it, it's something that's that we need to do, but it won't stop us from conducting our budget committee uh, business for the district today. Okay. And I'm clear. I, I had actually thought that that Frank was a member of the budget committee as well as the budget officer. The distinction now makes sense. And I think, is everyone clear on who the committee members are and then who the budget officer is? Okay. So then I think we have a quorum. Did we do, you know, we have a quorum and we can Correct. just continue with the agenda. I'm sorry about not being able to appoint the additional budget committee member no, today. That's, that's, not, that's not fine. Problem. And Thanks. so then I will just get in touch with Commissioner's office to have this just as a sign yep. meeting thing that you guys do. Yep, and our next meeting is May 30th, so that would be very helpful. Okay. And in Got fact, it. if you have time, you could probably walk it over across the hall <laughs> to John Jesuit and have him scan I it. I will in definitely do Good. that. Okay, yeah. thank you. We'll explain right. it all to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, hey, they said to do this, sure. and he yeah. should yeah. say yeah. yes, exactly. right? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I'll just take that and stick it in the same file. Yep, that's what I was going to do. Okay, thank you. Okay, so uh, our next order of business is to receive the budget message from the district budget officer, and that's me. So I'll read the message. Uh, you have a copy of this in the package that's handed to you. The Curry County 4-H and Extension Service District was formed in September of 1986, and voters approved its taxing authority in November of that same year. Its purpose is to provide funding for operation of the Extension Office and delivery of extension programs in Curry County. The district is authorized to collect ad valorem taxes at a permanent rate limit of 10.21 cents per thousand dollars of assessed value on property within the district's boundaries, and these funds are dedicated to the district's operating expenses. The district is required to complete the local budget process per ORS 294. The district's proposed budget for the 2018-19 fiscal year includes a general fund beginning balance of $508,165, of which $300,000 is reserved for future expenditure, anticipated revenues of $300,633, expenses of $328,163, $500 as a placeholder for capital outlay, a contingency fund of 32,816 resulting in an ending balance of $447,319. The proposed reserve of 300,000 for future expen expenditure will be used for upgrades and remodel of the existing or potentially new office space, leaving an unallocated balance of 147,319 to address cash flow requirements at the beginning of the following fiscal year. Forms LB20 and LB30, which you have a copy of in your packet, summarize the district's current and proposed budgets and provide actual data for the two previous completed budget years. The district does not provide services directly. Rather, it maintains an intergovernmental agreement with Oregon State University Extension Service to provide extension educational programs and services in Curry County. This arrangement provides considerable leveraging of the district's financial resources. The district provides funding to OSU Extension for the basic infrastructure of the Curry County OSU Extension office, including office space, support, and program staff, supplies, and travel. 
OSU provides in-kind support by assigning extension faculty to serve Curry County and provides administrative and accounting support. The local extension office generates additional funding through program fees, enrollments, product sales and grants, and maintains a significant cadre of volunteers. As shown in the LB30, a majority of the expenditures budgeted for the district are included in the contracted services line item. This reflects the funds paid to OSU for services rendered. Payments are made approximately quarterly on a reimbursement basis. The district account maintained by the county will continue to receive tax-related funds, including interest and penalty payments, and will make expenditures for insurance, administrative fees, and periodic reimbursements to OSU. To facilitate these reimbursements, OSU will track expenditures related to fulfillment of its agreement with the district. OSU will account separately for revenues generated through program fees, donations, etc. This information will be made available to the district's board and budget committee. The proposed budget for FY 2018-19 would certify a tax rate of 10.21 cents per thousand taxable assessed value, and that's our district's legal rate limit. The estimated result will be 285,633 in current year taxes. The budget estimates 12,000 in prior year taxes and 3,000 in interest earnings. The proposed district budget includes 328,513 for expenses, all of which is anticipated to reimburse OSU for costs of extension services to Curry County. OSU's reimbursable expenses are expected to include 241,413 for personnel, that's salary and OPE, other payroll expenses, and $87,100 for materials and services. The Curry County Extension Office plans to include the following staff positions in FY 2018-19. A part-time 75% office coordinator, that's Cheryl, who's here. A part-time 50% Master Gardener Educational Program Assistant, that's Scott Thiemann. A, a full-time 4-H Educational Program Assistant, that's Ruth Dixon. Mm -hmm. A part-time Educational Program Assistant to assist with 4-H and food programs, that's Brianna Wallace. And a portion of salary of Outreach Program Coordinator 4-H and food programs position. OSU intends to continue stationing two faculty members in Curry County to lead local educational efforts. These are focused on watershed management, that's me, and 4-H youth development, that's Margie House. Five other faculty members stationed in Coos County will retain responsibilities to serve Curry County as part of their assignments, covering programs in tourism and business development, forestry, agriculture, marine coastal communities, and family and community health and I respectfully submit this <coughs> budget message. Um, I, I, I hate to be a nitpicker, but... Uh, what was that again? A nitpicker. <laughs> <laughs> However, when you voted for your board chair, you voted for somebody who is actually not part of the budget committee, so the budget committee chair needs to be voted for that somebody that's actually on the budget committee. Okay, so I think what Louise is saying is Frank's the budget officer, but among, but he's not on the budget committee, and among the budget committee members, a budget committee chair for the district should be, should be elected by the board of the budget committee, excuse me. So we're going out of order because then someone needs to say, is there a motion to adopt and those kind of things. So um, that's the niche she's picking. I see. <coughs> So is there a motion to appoint a chair for the 4-H District Budget Committee? So would one of you like to be the chair? I guess it? I'm it because <laughs> I'm the only person actually on the committee. Because <laughs> yeah. oh. Peggy is not now. I don't think he's not. Oh, no, no, Wiley's our regional, regional director. director. Yeah. Oh, well, that's why we were introduced, but I, when we went back around, I thought I, I understood that you were also a budget committee member. No. So we're, we've got four, okay. basically, so we out still, of six. So we still so have, have a we've got so four. So outgoing chair, I'm going to, if I may, I'm going <laughs> to make a motion to uh, nominate uh, Lynn Boniface as the um, board budget member. Is that right? 
the I'll budget chair. That. The budget chair. committee Excuse chair. Me, yes. Can, can we just, for the record, state who is on this budget committee then? So we have a list of the names who are on the budget committee. We would have the commissioners and then Lynn so, Boniface. Okay. Lynn Boniface, Court Boyce, Sue Gold, and Tom Huxley are four out of six members present here for the. So, but do we have a fifth? member that's not that's within the time frame that's just not here yes okay, okay. yes so that would account for the <coughs> brian grumman is the okay. other member that's not okay. atten in attendance okay. today okay and then the other budget committee putative member is <coughs> hasn't been appointed and we didn't have time to do that prior to hearing correct, okay. correct. thanks thank you and i have one more comment Whoop. We have a second. I, I, oh, oh was there a vote? We had a second. Did there a vote? On did this? have a second? I on did. the chair. Yeah, I Thank you. It. Okay. Did you guys vote? So, no. Okay. So, is there a vote? Yeah. So, who who leads the vote? Who leads the vote? Um, <laughs> the attorney. <laughs> sure. So, Tom Huxley, call, would you call for the question on the vote, sure. then, please? Aye. Aye. Bold. Aye. Or boys. Lynn Boniface. <laughs> Abstain. Okay. <laughs> well, you have a majority of a quorum, this so interesting. so you have a majority of the quorum, so it passes. Okay, you are the so. chair. Okay. Thank you. Lynn. And now you can now you take now over. Yeah, don't worry, this never gets used again. <laughs> so if okay. you need, there's the. So I, can may I make a comment, please? I'm I'm sorry about this, but I'm looking at the resources and the requirements and this is uh, required by local budget law to have a balanced budget. I'm not seeing a balanced budget here. Oh, <clears throat> so right. So uh, this 806708 of total resources seems to be just adding the two resources on the bottom, the taxes and the 523. Uh, so that's, 808 798 and your total um, requirements are 1 million 50 212. That, that's because there's a problem in the formula the way um, we put this together and I discovered it about 10 minutes ago well just before I came in here the the formula on the LB30 includes uh, total personnel services but the total personnel services are also included in contracted services. That's the, the, the contract pays for all the personnel in, in the personnel line. So if you subtract the total personnel services uh, from that number, the million number, you end up with 808798. Okay, so the, is the uh, personnel services paid for by that contracted services? Yes. So the amount under so uh, line one should twice. be actually be zero. Under line one and on the LB30. Yeah. yeah. The proposed the faculty services line one total personnel services. If it's a contracted service, it belongs down here on line 29. And so it should be zero up above. Okay, that that makes sense. It shouldn't be added in twice. That, okay. That's obvious. So then total yes. personnel services is going to be wiped out too. No, the, that's just an addition yeah, of total. one through oh, okay. six there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then that makes that balance. Yes. At, and that total should be 808798. Yes, that's correct. Well, sorry about that. That was, I, I just caught it a few minutes ago. <laughs> so I make a motion that we approve the budget as amended. Second. Um, does it have to be more specific? It has to be in and the, the tax rate of also? and the tax rate of. Okay, so <coughs> I move that we approve the budget as amended for eight hundred eight thousand seven hundred ninety-eight dollars, with a tax rate limit of ten point two one cents per thousand. Is that good enough? That's pretty good. Okay. okay is there a second? I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do we have Do we have resolutions prepared for? That's That's for um, in the June board of when they, have, they have to publish their. Okay. Um, Thank LB you. Thirty and and so notice of. 
Yep, and uh, so these are recommendations to the Curry County Board of Commissioners. Yes, and thank and you very and much. The okay. Board of Commissioners will adopt. So this is a we just did an approved budget from the proposed. I think we did it. Any further we business? Did do it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I guess okay. Um, calling for the adjournment of the 4-H and OSU Extension Budget Committee meeting. Okay. All right. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Louise, for your help. Before we adjourn, oh. I mean, it's actually too late. We kind of, kind of did adjourn, but we didn't get receive public comment. Uh, no, so public hearing. Sure. Is there any public comment? Yeah. So reopen the meeting, reopen. Madam Chair. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The meeting of the Budget Committee 4-H and OSU Extension is reopened to um, consider public comment on the budget. Is there any public comment? No public comment. Okay. So uh, I now uh, call for the adjournment of the 4-H and OSU Budget Extension Committee. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, all. Too late. I already put the order in the <laughs> office. It's up to the people running the next meeting. Yeah.